Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Um, I did some guitar string stuff last week, which I know is not what most of you are here for. So returning to um, the stuff that people have been watching recently, I'm going to have a go at making a silicone mould. Um, I've made a silicone inlay recently, which went quite well, and I found the silicone really easy to work with. Um, it doesn't store for very long, so I'm going to use some more of it now. So the thing that I want to make are some pendants, and I love this style of pendant, the ones that are like a, I guess they're sort of like an asymmetric donut. I've seen people online using moulds um, that they've bought for stuff like this, but I just can't find any in the UK. I can find trays of every shape of pendant that has one of these in it, but I don't want that. So I'm going to just make a mould using three that I have. Now, the purple one is not in good nick. It's shiny, but it has some cracks and scuffs in it. I think it's actually polished amethyst. I have no idea what the blue one's made from. Um, that one kind of has a bit of texture on it, but that's a matte finish. Then I have this really nice shiny black one as well. So they're all scuffed because they're very well loved. But if I'm using a kind of marbling technique or chameleon powders, I think it will hide any slight imperfections that get cast into the silicone. It's absolutely worth a shot. Um, because I can't find what I need so I might as well just have a go. So I'm going to give them a really good clean with isopropyl alcohol because otherwise I'll be taking a cast of my fingerprints as well. So the way that I'm going to do this, because I don't want to waste tons of um, silicone, is to use a circular cookie cutter and this circle just perfectly fits those three in. In order to figure out what volume of silicone I need I came up with the idea of just using this big jug it's obviously a little bit smaller than the cookie cutter but if I look at the height of those pendants they don't really raise up much beyond here so I've just kind of looked alongside here to kind of get a guesstimate for how much silicone I need obviously better to have too much than not enough so I'm gonna probably go for maybe 80, 70 or 80 mils of, of um, silicone. So you mix the two parts together. So the silicone that I'm using is the Start So World silicone. It's a one to one ratio by volume. So I'm going to measure that in um, a smaller beaker. I just use this big one to, to get a guess for that. So the way that I'm going to sort this out is to basically put sellotape on the back of it and then turn it over. Now these pendants do not have a flat back so they're out of shot I'm talking about them and pointing at them and you can't see them um they're three-dimensional they don't have a flat back so although I'm going to have the sellotape there for them to stick down it's not going to bind all of it so I'm expecting spillage spillage is okay I can trim that out if I'm careful but what I am going to do is add a bit of blue tack just to kind of make the sides here flush so I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not. I'm just going to have a go. So sellotape on the back. I'm going to hot glue that as well. Um, so I'm going to do it onto some foil because silicone will stick to silicone. I don't want to do it on my mat. So I'm going to hot glue around the edge just to make sure there are no leaks. And I'll stick these down inside and go from there. So... Yeah, I'm going to get everything set up before I mix my silicone because although you do have a bit of work time, you don't have endless work time. So I'm going to make sure everything's just ready to go. So first step, get this done. Then I'm going to clean up the pendants and get those stuck in and then I'll mix the silicone. So I'm looking forward to this. And um, once I've made the mould, I am going to make some pendants as well. So you'll see that later on in the video. So let's get started. I'm so excited. the string out of the way, the cords out of the way. So I'm going to sellotape the back of this. So I'm just going to kind of crisscross it so that there's full coverage. Turn that over and push that down. waiting 
for the glue gun to heat up, I'm going to give these a clean. I will give them a wipe again once I've stuck them down. I'm just going to run around the edge of this. So now I'm going to take these and place them down evenly spread apart inside the cookie cutter. I'm not going to squish them down just yet, I want to get them in place first. Perfect. Now I'm going to squish them down. That's good to go. So I'm going to go off camera and mix up the silicone. So as I said earlier on, it's equal parts um, of A and B. Says to stir for three minutes, but I always stir for five just so that I'm absolutely certain everything is fully mixed. And then just a case of pouring it in. Okay, I've been mixing for five minutes. I've added some purplish red mica powder. Um, yeah, I've had that mica powder from Amazon for absolutely ages. Scraped the sides, scraped my stick. Been going for five solid minutes, so I think we're good to go. Hopefully, the mica powder won't affect the bubble release technology, which is pretty good in this um, silicone. Can see the bubbles coming to the surface and popping so apparently if you pour this from high up it helps to get the bubbles out so i'm gonna have a go at doing that too much silicone never mind I don't have time to make another mold now I, I can't make a mold housing in that time so not before this is going to start going gloopy bubbles are still coming to the surface and popping and it continued to do that last time um, so yeah as long as the bubbles are rising up through it this is going to be the base so if there are a few on the base that really won't matter I'm pretty sure that the swirl I just put in it won't stay because mica powder does what mica powder wants to do and that's generally not what I want it to do so I'm going to go off and clean my beaker because silicone will stick to silicone so I need to go and get that cleaned up with some wipes now so that I don't ruin my beaker and I'll be back tomorrow to to see how this demolds so I'll see you guys tomorrow good morning it's been 11 and a half hours since I poured this so this can be demolded after about eight um, and then you have to leave it for the full 24 hours to let it finish leaching moisture before you can pour resin in there so I'm going to demold it now so that the inside parts can carry on kind of degassing and getting rid of any moisture so that I can then have a go and make some pendants so it didn't leak which is awesome um yeah move the foil out of the way then it make a crinkling noise um okay I'm scared <laughs> Thank you. 
sticky, gloopy blue tack mess. Hopefully that will come out of the silicone. So I need to break this hot glue off. Okay, right, how do you get these out? Wiggle it. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Not too much overspill, so the blue tack did the job. It's always really fascinating how um, the silicone and resin will pick up the texture of the thing that you've cast. One of these is super shiny, one is super matte, which is exactly as I expected it to be. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. And that one's kind of in between the two. So I've got a really shiny one, a really matte one, and something that's in between. So that looks like it's worked. Pretty happy with that. There isn't too much in the way of overspill, so... I'm going to have to watch that I only pour to... That there's kind of like a lip, which is where the pendant finished, and then there was the blue tack kind of wall. So I can see where I need to pour to when I, I do make these, so that's fine. But here you go, you can see the difference in texture there. That one's super matte, that one's a bit shinier, and then that one very shiny. And you can see actually that all three are actually quite different um, in shape. So yeah, it'd be interesting to, to make a cast with this and see how it goes. You can see that I have significantly too much silicone here. <laughs> it's, um, the pendants are so shallow, I could have done half of that and it would have been enough. But no, it's good and sturdy, so yeah. if I get some use out of it, it isn't wasted silicone. So there are still some bits here that have stayed sticky where it was touching the blue tack. So lesson learned there, the oils in blue tack um, affect the the stickiness of the of the silicone. But that's okay because I'm not pouring up to that level anyway. What I'm going to do is mix up some black resin and I'm going to try the technique that I used on my second nebula tray. And that was the technique of just adding some blobs of mica powder spritzing them with 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol just before pouring the resin. So the idea here is to make sure you can still see the black in the background so just blob this in so I'm just kind of flicking the brush. I'm using the Let's Resin Chameleon Powder in Grape because it's got a lot of colour shift. It's kind of a blue pink colour shift. It's one of the most colour shifting of all of the Let's Resin powders. I'm thinking, should I put a second colour in just as a little pop? Magenta one. That's the, that's the one. Magenta I think is going to be the one to do. So I don't want a lot of this at all. I'm just going to wipe my brush off. I just want to get a little bit of this here and there, just as an extra little pop. It will give them a sort of nebula vibe. I'm not intending for them to be nebula pendants, but the technique is very similar. Okay, that's probably enough. 
less is more she says while dumping more powder on <laughs> whatever happens they're going to be pretty i'm sure so yeah um so yeah black resin for these so i'm going to be using the j diction resin i don't think i've said that so far so j diction resin with some of the vista black pigment that is what my plan is for those guys It's been, I think, about 18 hours since I poured this resin. It's not completely cured, but it's um, it's cured enough to demold. Looking in here, I think I may have kind of gone over over the bit where it means I've got some ratty edges. So I'm going to demold now, so it'll make it easier to trim that off. I have about 100 nail files in this house. Can I find any right now? No, not a single one. So <laughs> I will probably have to get some sandpaper or something and just trim that excess down. But um, yeah, I put too much resin in. I should have stopped at the line that I could see, the visible line. So they're looking a bit ratty on the back, that's for sure. Very, very wonky. And full of sticky silicone on the back of that one. Okay, so there's a lot of trimming to do here. I hope the other side of them is all right because these don't feel great. Oh, they're nice on that side though. Oh, I'll take that. They're all right. The backs are shocking, but <laughs> I'll just use it error. They're pretty good. I really like those. The shiny ones, so different. It's amazing how different the finish is on these. Really interesting. I guess you could top coat that if you wanted it super shiny. That's cool. Back. Not so much. <laughs> the back is terrible. I'm going to do not do this. I'm going to use my craft knife. See if I can trim some of this off. Oh, yuck. Feels like um, a hard boiled sweet that a child has sucked for a bit and got bored of and then spat out. <laughs> it's so sticky and horrible. The one you always find stuck to the carpet when you hoover in the car. So yeah, I'm obviously going to sand these down to make them um, smoother rather than all these big chunks sliced off. I'm just going to get the worst of it off now. While it's soft enough to okay let's move that out there the backs need some work but i have never made a cast of anything before and then gone on to actually make a piece of jewelry from it so i am really thrilled with these so they do need a bit of finishing on the back and a nice bit of sanding but they're nice i'm happy I'm going to cut some necklace cord. I quite like the thicker cord with these. With these um, kind of donut pendants, what I like to do is put the, the cord through from the front and then like fold it in half and then just thread it through like that. That's just the way that I prefer to wear them when I make them for me. When I buy these, I always replace the cord so that they look like this. That's just the way that I prefer them. You can finish these however you like. You could put a, a jump ring in here and hang it on a chain that way. I just personally prefer the look of this. They are giving me nebula vibes, which is... Oh wow, I was only looking at them from above. 
When I look at them from the side, the colour shift. Oh my goodness. In my excitement of actually having a finished pendant, I'd forgotten that I'd used colour shifting powder on these. So starting at the top, you can see that there are three very different finishes on them. One's very matte, one's demi-matte and one is shiny. Exactly as you'd expect, but you can see the colour shift. If you're down here, it's green. Then we go up and it changes from green to blue and lilac over on this side. I love these colour shifting powders. Every time I use them, I'm always like, I love the colour shifting powder. Yes, we know, Mary, we know you love the chameleon powders, but look at this witchcraft. So cool. If next time I make these, I deliberately am very, very careful to not pour past that little seam that I can see in the mould, I should be okay. They are going to be thin. Um, I really wish that I had not put the blue tack on and I'd tried to mould these more three-dimensionally. I just wasn't really thinking because I'd never done it before. All I could think of was that I couldn't get it to sit down flat, the shape that the pendants were. But from the front, they're cool. I'd say that was a win. For a very first go, I would say that's a win. And I get the beautiful colour shifting witchcraft. <laughs> any of you guys watching with the colour shift do you just do this for hours just stare at it tilting it back and forth and just think to yourself how how does it do this it's amazing there you go i hope you enjoyed the video um yeah if any of you have any tips on casting in silicone please do share them in the comments below I know almost nothing about this. I'm completely winging it. So given the fact I'm winging it, I'm happy that I got anything that's even remotely usable. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Make sure you're subscribed because next week we're doing mini potion bottles. I am unbelievably excited to use that thinner bar mold that I bought recently. So make sure you're subscribed. Have a great weekend. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.